This video is of my fly fishing trip to Alaska on the Naknek River in the Katmai National Forest region. We fished on the Naknek River outside the lodge as well as taking several float plane trips into remote areas. Smile, smile. I overnighted in Anchorage and took Alaskan air into King Salmon. The only way into King Salmon is either by boat, barge, or airplane. There are no roads in and out. King Salmon Airport is pretty basic. There's only one gate and there's no area to sit at the gate and there's no Wi-Fi. At Katmai Trophy Lodge here, you can see the guide boats. Each boat is set up for one guide or captain and one, two, or three fishers, depending on the party size. The lodge itself has five separate rooms capable of sleeping up to three or four people in each room. Each has its own bath. Off to the right, are the quarters for the guides or captains and off to the left are several other cabins for guests. The lodge is a short drive from the King Salmon Airport on a gravel road. The body of water in front of the lodge is the Naknek River the dark green area in this map is the Katmai National Park and Preserve. Katmai National Park and Preserves is the home of Brooks Lake and Brooks Falls where the bears collect to eat. Before we get on to the fishing, let's go through a little bit of the procedure. There's three meals a day, breakfast, hot lunch on the boat if you're in the uh, river, if you fly out it's a sandwich, and of course there's a great dinner every evening. During and after dinner there's a discussion as to tomorrow's activities. It's then posted should you forget what you're going to do in the morning. On the first day I head out with Austin on the Naknek River in search of King Salmon. It wasn't long before we connected. Other than the sockeye salmon we released all other fish that we caught. Ready? He should kick. Yep, he's ready. Done. Good work. <laughs> you can tell I'm not having too much fun. Let's try that again. It wasn't long before I had another one on. Now it's time for the real challenge. See if I can yeah. film and net. Oh, Ooh, there we go. Big so. <laughs> oh, there we go. And let's pull them to the left. See how much control we have. Okay. Yeah. So then we'll do the same thing where I want you to pull them to the right. Oh. Keep that tension, bring in a little bit more, and then now bring him up and to the left. Okay. Got him. Nicely done. Beautiful king. Boom. All I got to say is what a hoot. The fish aren't all that big but they're all fun to catch. After a morning of fishing, Austin fires up the gas stove and cooks marinated chicken breast and green beans. After a day's worth of fishing, we're back to the lodge, cleaned up, having dinner, telling fish stories, and trying to figure out what we want to do tomorrow. So what we decided was that the two Kevins and I would take off with Cam and Tommy up the main river into Naknek Lake across the lake to another river which is fed by Idavane Lake. We picked up a little rain on the boat ride but as you can see it's clearing up. So there's the river we're going to fish. Now it's a matter of beaching the boat, getting out and getting things ready. But I've been here when they've had like brand new people and they're like oh yeah yeah just talk to so and so he'll tell you how to, what to right. do when you get there. The river, the catch, and release, and the bears. 
After a quick lunch, we load up into the boat and head across the lake to a place referred to as Location X. The next day I went out with Captain Jake to get my limit of sockeye salmon. See the pond full of duckweed? As you'll recall, these are the only fish that we actually kept on this trip. The lodge will individually vacuum pack these fillets and freeze them for transport back home. This guy in 2000 fish. The limit is five sockeye a day, so theoretically you could take as many as 60 or 70 fillets home with you. I opted just for one day's allotment because there are so many other fish to go after. That night we were treated to some smoked sockeye salmon as an appetizer. All the wet gear, waders, and boots are stored in this exterior shelter along with rod racks so that we don't have to take all that in every night. Today, John, Beth, Kevin, and I, along with Tommy and Austin, are flying into Contact Creek. Contact Creek is about a 30 minute flight south and east of our location. Here we are loading up our gear at the Branch River Air Service in King Salmon. We're flying in a de Havilland DHC-2 Beaver. This particular flyout is somewhat unique as we will land at a closer location, this small lake, and the one in the background is our takeout point because you need longer runway to take off than to land. Kevin was the first one to get a fish, but then we had to take a break and let this pedestrian walk through and head on up river. Hey, hey. No, 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 no. After the bear passed by, Austin was able to help me after about 25, 30 minutes and 300 yards downstream land this great king salmon. There were plenty of dollies to go around as well. John, Beth, and I were able to get three in one net. Just try to support them with... Smile, smile, bring them to me, bring them to me. <laughs> After catching the king and all the dollies, what else is there left to do? How about Arctic grayling on a dry fly? There After catching go. several grayling on the dry fly, it was time to pack up and hike out to our pickup point. We got there just shortly before the pilot did. Here again you can get the concept of what we did. The lake in the distance is the put in lake and the creek below is Contact Creek where we were fishing. The next morning after a hearty breakfast, Tommy and I drive over to the Katmai Trophy Lodge Sister Facility, Knack Knack River Camp, and meet up with two others for a fly out to what is called Heavenly. Heavenly is the creek that, or river that flows into Brooks Lake that then flows into Knack Knack Lake. After loading up, Ken and Mike, we take off this time in a Cessna 206, which is a smaller aircraft. As you can see, all the gear is in the cabin with us. This lake is our landing site. After about an hour and a half to two hour hike in, we set up and we're into rainbows like you wouldn't believe. So many we lost count of how many we caught. This one measured just over 22 inches. The fishing strategy was to find the sockeye salmon and then float beads that looked like salmon eggs in amongst them because the rainbow would be feeding off of the salmon eggs as the salmon are spawning. And every once in a while you'll connect with one of the sockeyes.
<laughs> He's licking his chops. Because this area had not been fished in several years, there was not a well beaten down trail in or out. We did find some game trails, but most of the work was bushwhacking, and when not, we were on the tundra, which was like walking on spongy six to eight inch foam. The hike out was a little bit easier as at least we could see our target, the lake in the background. I went out on the last day with Captain Jake. It was rainy and a little bit chilly and this was the last catch of the trip. I retraced my steps back overnighting in Anchorage. Here's the baggage claim where you can put your fish in cold storage for the evening. My final evening and dinner in Alaska here in Anchorage at sunset time is 10.55 p.m. That's it folks. I hope you enjoyed this short clip. Many thanks to Sage and James at the Katmai Trophy Lodge for hosting us and Kevin Hansen of Rod and Rivet in Des Moines, Iowa for organizing the trip. Happy fishing!